Hello, um, we're supposed to be making chocolate today. I've got Harry Potter helping me. Hello. <laughs> what is that thing? It's a golden snitch from Harry Potter. You don't need a flying golden snitch, you need this. Do you know what that is? Um, a wet and dry grinder. That's one thing. In this box is everything, I hope, that you need to make chocolate from scratch. All right? Yes. From a bean to the bar. Everything. Hooray! <laughs> For those of you that missed it, I did, you see that, some homemade roasted coffee beans. Ugh. Smell that? Smell that, Phoebe. Cool. Cool, blimey. <laughs> and that was really fun. We took the raw beans and roasted them. We also did it with a heat gun as well. This is very similar. So we have a wet and dry grinder. What else is in your magical chocolate making box? Show them, Phoebes. A silicone chocolate bar mold. Yes, that's for the end, if we get that far. Food slash barbecue thermometer. Dried skimmed milk. Cocoa butter. I don't know what this is because it's in a different language. Okay, exactly what these are. These are cocoa beans. They're a teeny bit acidic smelling, but that's one of the first things we're doing. Last but not least, some of you should have one of these, but unfortunately the kids, I did have one and ended up turning it into a plant pot. Yes, it's a mortar and pestle. Yeah. You remember this? I remember. We that. had one of these and it was in our garden, <laughs> in our old house for like three years by the end. Yeah. It had soil coming out of it. I think you guys made potions in it. Oh, we did, didn't we? We used to grind grass. You did, you used to grind grass. You're going to use it properly today if yes. we get to that stage. First thing we're going to do is roast the beans, all right, mate? I want you to pour as many as you can of those beans. You can get loads of different flavours and varieties online if you have a little hunt around. Get them on the tray, mate. Uh, the main thing, apparently, I've never done this before, is to make sure they're not on top of each other. We're going to oven roast them. Oh, is it a really strong? Can you smell the acidity? There is a little bit of an acidic waft in here. Acidic waft, a well-known heavy metal band. Uh, 100 degrees C fan. So what's gonna happen is we are gonna roast all of these and they will probably change color slightly, but the most important thing apparently is the smell, mate, okay? Okay. The smell now that you think is chocolatey, apparently once we bake it and they roast them, it should be even more chocolatey, almost like a chocolate brownie smell in here. Oh. Which is not a bad thing, right? It's lush. I don't know if you remember the uh, when I did the homemade roast coffee video. I did it in the oven, but then I also showed another version that the guy in the coffee shop showed us, where it's a heat gun, stirring it with a sieve for consistent heat temperature and roasting it by hand. I genuinely, I'm not going to do that today, but I really believe that you could do the same thing. Can you hear that beeping? That is the sound of the oven. Should we go for it? Mm -hmm. Let's go. You don't need your oven gloves, all right? But you can use your stool if it helps you. Ready? All right. Ready? Put it, shelf, shelf. Uh, put it in the middle shelf, yeah. Put it on the grooves. See it sit, sit in there like that? Oh. Alright, push it in. Alright, mate. So your friends can say to you, hey, what did you do this weekend? And you can go, well, I didn't go to the party. I didn't listen to music. <laughs> I made chocolate. Yeah. Now, whilst we're waiting for those, we have to have a little heart to heart, don't we? Okay. You are very, very, very good at Mario Kart now. And I think it's reached that stage where I'm like, I'm trying my hardest. I'm like, we play it on the Switch, don't we? Yeah. And she destroys me and I'm generally going, <laughs> she's, like, try, she's just like amazing. So if anyone wants to challenge Phoebe to Mario Kart, was mm. it coin battle? Yeah. Yeah, she's really good at that. Okay, so the timer has just gone off. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so it's been in there. So I think we gave it 20 minutes to be honest. Yeah. Watch out for the draft, all right, because of the fan. It smells like brownies. Does it? I can't get my nose in far enough. <laughs> Oh yeah, it does smell like chocolate cake or something, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's gone less acidity smelling to more of a, well, what you'd want it to smell like. They have gone redder in colour. Uh, inside these shells, what we're roasting is the actual nib in the middle, which you can actually buy in shops anyway, like this, but we've just gone that extra step. That's what's going into the chocolate. The shells, we're going to get rid of, okay? Okay. You can bash them. And you can do it by hand. There's some fun ways and some sensible ways. We've got two bowls here. Look, there's a bean. What you want to do is pick the shell off it, put the shell in there, show the camera the bean in the middle, and put the bean in there. Okay. So this is one method that you can do by hand. Literally, I suppose if you're using just small batches, 
I ordered 500 grams of beans and you need roughly, well it varies depending on the chocolate you're making. Dark chocolate is like nearly about 80% of the cocoa nibs. Milk chocolate is a lot less, but the actual bean takes up quite a lot. I was expecting like the whole shell to just shrivel down to a little bit of nib, but you actually do get a lot out of it. So bear that in mind. Don't order like kilos of it. Oh yeah, look at that. Can you see that? Sometimes it needs a little bit of encouragement to come oh, off. Oh yeah, I literally just squeezed it. That was yeah, that. you just got to push it a little bit and it pops out. Look at that. Actual cocoa bean. Is it nice? No. Now, this is taking a long time and some of them aren't coming off. Like this is actually welding to the nib. So let's do the other way. Okay. Yeah? Even that's broken up a little bit. Okay. Go get a rolling pin. All right, now bash them away. We're getting like little bits of shell like that coming off. This is what this method does. The shell stays in there with it. Keep going, mate. What's gonna happen is, once it's all bashed up and we're happy with it, we're gonna push them out with a very popular household tool. Oh, look at that combination, I love that, look. And there's one pure bean. Is there? That's a whole bean. Amazing. Now this is, I say like 500 grams worth of beans. I think we should maybe reduce this down a little bit. But apparently the shell that's in there with it, I really, really hope this is true now. Because it's a lot lighter than the nibs, these are actually quite heavy in comparison. They'll blow out. And what do we use to blow it out? Hair dryer. Yes. Yes, we're going to use a hair dryer. And that's why I was thinking the heat gun approach would be even better because it'll actually blow out the shells and roast them all at the same time. I don't know if it will crack them though like this. You probably still need to do that step. So a heat gun now might over roast them. Just describe that smell though. Mummy's chocolate brownies. Mummy's. Brilliant. So don't put it too close. Because Amy has just given me a health and safety warning, haven't you? Yeah, she's saying this is not a good idea. No, no, that's way too close. Oh, no. <laughs> Beat me. That's so cool. Yeah, it is cool, but there's bits going everywhere. What's the, don't eat it. Oh, but look. Okay, just to show you. It's blowing out all the shell. There, all the nib is staying in there. Whoa. Right, we need to do this outside. My dad is literally hair drying chocolate in the garden. Do you know how weird this looks? Hope the neighbours aren't watching because this is embarrassing. I'll tell you what, that's blooming work. The colour difference is amazing. And you're eating a fidget spinner cookie from the other day, are you? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Mm. <laughs> All right, so we're doing a final bit of quality control because doing that method is messy and there's still a teeny weeny bit of shell in there. I'd say it's like, well, like 95% cocoa nib? Yeah. So we're just putting any bits of spare shell in there. I think even the best chocolate factory in the world, other than Willy Wonka's with his chocolate lake, is probably gonna have a teeny bit of shell in there. The next step in this mission is to grind down some of these bigger pieces, like a whole bean steel like that, which is where the wet and dry grinder would come in. Uh, but we're gonna use a food processor first of all, just to make it easier to break it down, and then hopefully the grinder will get it nice and fine. So to make it easier to get it into the beaker, we're gonna put it into the jug first. Suspense is killing me. <laughs> we're doing one little nib at a time. All right. Well, that was, oh no, it was supposed to be easier. So I just want to see after we whiz them up if there is actually much of a difference by doing that method. Is that right? Yeah. All right, stick your lid on. Yes, there we go. Oh no, what's happened is it's stuck to form some of the cocoa butter already by doing that. Yeah, it's all good. Don't worry, pour it in. Because this is what's going to happen. It's going to release cocoa butter. You got it? Yes. Pour it in there, mate, and just compare it. Oh, see how it's forming together? That's the butter that's starting to make it bond. Let's do the other batch. All right. Hang on, let's just have a look at that. Look, you see how it's formed the butter here? We need to get that out of there a minute before whizzing it, okay? Okay. Right, you carry on with that, mate, okay? Because what's been released from the nib is actual cocoa butter. Remember what I was saying earlier about the whole things that you buy? Oh, it's really nice for your skin. Cocoa butter with vanilla essence in there. All the moisturizers, all that stuff. Of course I know about that. But you can... <laughs> You can buy cocoa butter and that can help with your ratio of the chocolate you're using. You can actually buy separate cocoa butter, which we are going to use, which adjusts to the consistency. So when you see on a chocolate bar, the cocoa percentage, it's also got a cocoa butter in there as well. So it's not just your nibs. Oh, look at that. That's so much more finer now, isn't it? Yep. 
These are the ground nibs then, and we've got, to be honest, way, way, way too much. Um, 500 grams of nibs gives you all of that. And to make milk chocolate specifically, you actually use hardly any of the ground nibs, right? Just that. Mm -hmm. To make a dark chocolate bar, for example, if it's 100 grams, you'd use 80% of that. But when you buy a milk chocolate bar, it tends to be more like sort of 25 to 30%, like this. And that's what we're doing because we both prefer milk chocolate, right? Yes. If you're using dark chocolate, it tends to just be a little bit of this and a little bit of icing sugar, and that's it. Which is why it's way more rich, right? Yeah. Compared to this, which has got uh, the cocoa nibs. This is the cocoa butter, which looks like white chocolate buttons, white sugar, and this is milk powder. So that's where the milk chocolate is really gonna come from. It's gonna take away the sharpness the intensity of this. Speaking of broken down, the actual cocoa butter pebbles, or whatever we call them, look like white chocolate buttons. We're gonna have to break these down a little bit just to help them with a the grinder. But, there you go. Let's actually try pure cocoa butter. It looks like white chocolate. Wow. That's really weird. It tastes of butter. It does taste of but butter then... that tastes of, there's no, there's nothing. There's a hint of this in it. Yeah. We've got the grinder ready, but I really want this to be really super fine, mate. So can you go over it with a rolling pin? Oh, okay. Rather than snapping it with your hands. You've done a good job, but I just want you to just compress it. Oh, that's not working, <laughs> is it? That's it. Okay, maybe I should put it in a bowl again. What I meant, Thebes, was this. Like that, just like break it down a teeny bit. But to be honest, it's starting to break down naturally anyway, because it's oily like butter anyway. Yeah. I think it'll be all right, do you? Mm, yeah. You do? You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Phoebe, could you please add in the other ingredients? Of course. And go the ground nibs, well, as best we can. That's all the cocoa, though, isn't it? That's crazy. I know, we've just made that all that for nothing, then. <laughs> yeah, milk powder and, of course, sugar. So this is really making you understand how much chocolate is actually in a bar of milk chocolate, if this works. Milk That's sugar. the sugar. Uh, what do you think about that, huh? Unhealthy, but I still like chocolate. Cool. We have transferred that mixture to a small jug, mm -hmm. and this is the grinder that we've set up. It seems very simple. Yeah, let's get it in, mate. Let's go. All right. Nice. Stick our lid on. Now stick that on and push down. And that's starting to grind it, believe it or not, apparently. You see how it's starting to thicken and get oily around the sides? Yeah. That's what you want it to do. It's going to take a bit of time. Good sign. So we'll, what we'll do, we'll take the lid off. Yes, there we go, see? It's starting to release the oils. Push it down. Didn't do anything then. Yeah. Um, well, we've got the mortar and pestle. I think this is another option. I'm going to warm this up in the microwave briefly and we can start to break it down like that, like the grinder's doing. And I think at the same time, this starts to do a very basic version of what's called conching, which is like agitating the chocolate uh, to mix all the flavors and the acidity around. At the moment, oh, it's changing in color. Yeah, at the bottom it looks, look, it's getting a bit Yeah, hard. but if we warm it, that will probably help it. I think I just bought a grinder for no reason. Yep, yeah, that's hot. Yeah, that is very hot. <laughs> right. Dump that mixture in. All right. And now, agitate it. Mix it around with the mortar. Like All right. That. Yeah, just keep pounding it down, mixing it round, and the heat. Oh my gosh, it's getting really stiff already. Is it working, yeah? Yeah, look at it. Cool. It's getting all together. That's what we want. So keep grinding it down, mixing it. I'm like a proud father. Look, what's happening? It's oh. going all sandy, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's like chocolate mud. Mate, this is literally our chocolate now. You just got to keep going on the... <laughs> keep going. But you, what we're doing is we're pushing all of that sugar, the powder and all the cocoa bits together. All right? Yep. And the cocoa butter as well just helps to loosen up too. So that's getting oily, but we really want to pound it, get nice and fine. And that's uh, the conching, I think is a massive like step that takes hours normally but um, we're just doing a basic version. <laughs> it's gone from like a really grainy texture to a fairly smooth one. It smells like chocolate, doesn't it? It smells more milky. Mm -hmm. That good? Yeah. So I, I think what we'll do, Phoebes, it doesn't look like too much in there, to be honest. Apparently that is enough for 100 gram bar, but mm -hmm. I think we'll do this again. Okay. And then jump to uh, the last step. Yeah. All right, little update. I've lost my kid to a mobile phone. Hello. Wish I had a mobile phone when I was your age. I had to go play Kirby outside with my friends, in all weathers. Anyhow, 
what I'm finding is if you warm the cocoa butter first in the microwave and pour it in, it helps sort of, well, provide some moisture uh, for the mix. But it's breaking down brilliantly. So I'm gonna do three batches of that because I'm gonna temper it. I've got such a big bowl there. I'm not using a tempering machine. No, 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 no. We're gonna do it like proper manual with a thermometer, but I wanted to have at least enough to get the thermometer in there properly and not be like, I mean, look, <laughs> literally touching the bottom of the bowl. Okay, so three batches later, we put two thirds in one bowl, one third in another. But what I did before that was I put all the three batches because they were different ratios, possibly one gram here or there, right? into the mortar and pestle, so they should all be from the same family. What I find really weird is, don't you think like the um, cocoa bean pebbles were like, hey, you're my friend. Like when the actual cocoa nibs got broken down. It's like, dad? Um, okay. Brilliant. Just trying to inspire this kid and all she wants to do is like TikToks. I don't have TikTok. So this water is uh, just starting to simmer. We're gonna melt this, obviously tempering plays around with the sugar crystals within the chocolate. Uh, so make sure the water isn't touching the bottom of the bowl. All right, we need this. Yes. Is this our new thermometer thing? With milk white and dark chocolate, I've done videos on this before. Uh, it's 45 degrees for milk, all right? So that's gonna take a little while. All right, it just got to over 45. It keeps dropping around and playing a little bit, but there we go, we take it off the heat. No! Love the steam. You filming, Daddy? Yeah. So we're gonna push that chocolate into the untempered chocolate, like this. Okay, stir that around, and we leave that to go to 26 degrees. So we just basically do this. All right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so for reference, while I'm waiting for that to cool down, I've decided to start making a dark one, and that is way easier. You also use icing sugar, AKA powdered sugar. You can see it probably puffing up there as well, but it's just so much easier because that sugar is finer, but it does use up so much more of the cocoa. That's all I've got left. There's nearly 190 grams of it in there, but I will show you what this turns out like alongside the milk. So the milk chocolate has just gone down to 26 degrees and about to put it back on. It only goes up for three degrees. Uh, the dark chocolate's doing well as well, a little bit further behind. I've lost Phoebe to having lunch now with the... All right, girls? Hello. Um, well, let's talk about conching. Normally, that's apparently like a really, really long process of grinding it down for ages. And I think with the mortar and pestle, we just kind of hacked that and sped it up. I'm not going to say it's absolutely ideal, but there's a dry conching where the mass is still crumbly and more like a powder. We saw that in the mortar and pestle, in fact, before grinding it as well in the electric grinder. Then it goes to a, a pasty plastic phase, which is what we saw. And then eventually it went to the, like, the liquefying phase, which we're now seeing where it's sort of like, can you see? It's like chocolatey in there. And I'm happy. I'm really, well, are you happy, Phoebes? Yeah. I've still, have I got, still got you? Yeah. All right, you can pour it in a mold in a minute, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm tempering the milk, getting the dark going, and that'll be that. All right, so we poured it into a jug to make it easier. And we're gonna probably save one of these blocks for the dark chocolate. Oh, you probably can't see that too well, but there's specks in there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a teeny bit more. Actual specks of the cocoa. So that's maybe where we didn't grind it perfectly. Let me just tap it, mate, okay? Remember when we went to Cabri World and we saw that? Yeah. Get all the air bubbles out. Teeny bit more, I think. But I've seen really expensive chocolates where they actually have it looking like this sort of texture, where they show a little bit of the cocoa bean. And we might have fluked that. It's got the consistency. It looks authentic. It does, doesn't it? We're just gonna do the same with the dark and we'll get these set and then maybe, maybe we'll have chocolate. Hopefully. Okay, that's going in the fridge. Had a little bit of a spillage with the dark chocolate one, but we'll see what that's like in a bit. Hey, are yeah, they looking set? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, hang on. They sound pretty solid. Okay, ready? Let's peel it off. Oh, it's popping out easy. Oh, wait oh. <laughs> What's happened there? It's got ben. a curve in it. That's the mold's fault, not ours. Look at that. Amazing. You just made chocolate. Now, we're not the best at this. We're not claiming we're pros, but we've done a blooming good job there. Huh? Yes. That's awesome. The thing we have to remember, mate, is in the space of a few hours, we've gone from this to bars. I know, I can't get over that. That's cool, right? Yeah. Shall we taste it? Yeah, yeah. Oh! 
Oh yeah, you did it, you did it. I'm gonna try. We've done it! Well, what does it taste like? Should we try it? I'm gonna try the milk one. I'm gonna try the milk one. I remember when I went to my doctor's quite recently, he was like, Mmm, I do like one piece of chocolate every now and then after my cup of tea. And I was like, one piece of chocolate? Yeah, because it's like chocolate milk. Yeah, one piece of chocolate every now and then after my cup of tea. And I was like, one piece? Who does that? I know, thin people. Dark milk. milk. We'll swap in a minute, right? Oh, that is rich. Mmm, that's nice. I don't really like dark chocolate, but... Making it with the icing sugar, like we did for that one, that's a little bit sweeter. I might not have got the ratios right. A teeny bit of cocoa nib in there, so we could have ground it down, or we should have, a lot more, but that's blooming nice. There's a few bits which are the nibs, but There's a few it's bits of nibs, really yeah? nice. I don't think you'll like the dark chocolate, but... I'll try it. I like sour Oh yeah, you can see teeny weeny specks. Oh, that's creamy, but I know you're right. It has got that little nib in there. It's a little bit of a Cadbury's vibe. <laughs> Do you not like dark chocolate? I don't like dark chocolate, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't like dark chocolate, but you're eating that and you're not sure about it. Mm. It's different. That's really fun. Much creamier with the milk. And uh, the dark is, is, is all right. Well, I think that's just about the end of the video, Phoebe. Yeah. Stonking job. Uh, actually, if you haven't seen the coffee making video, do check that out. It's a little intro to that. I'm doing homemade jerky soon, which you might not like because you're more of a vegetarian and you'll be at school, but um, you might be able to try it. Yeah. But you've made chocolate. I you're like Willy Wonka, high five. Wow. <laughs> I said high five, not a spank. <laughs> so for two novices in the kitchen, hopefully this inspires you to at least give this a go. It's a bit of a project, it's an experiment, and it's all down to how much you grind that. We really did give it our best shot, but you could keep going with that and get it super smooth. But I kind of like the little cocoa nibs running through it. It's only little mild fibres of it, right? Mm-hmm. Any final last words, Willy Wonka? Always eat chocolate because it's good. It's now it's not really good for you, but it's really yummy. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. You got the dark. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I prefer the dark. I prefer the light. Yeah. Is it a sweeter dark than normal? Yeah. That's the icing sugar. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to put that in there, but it helps get it nice and fine. Good. Good job. Well done. Yeah, this one's really nice. Oh, cool. You can eat uh, the rest, mate, all right? I was going to say how much you're eating. <laughs> Keep going. Chocolate all round. Bye.